So, you're interested in the Three Mountains, one of the most coveted and famously difficult achievements in all of gaming, but you don't want to have to wait ages to colonise and slowly become powerful enough to conquer the world. Well, what you need, my friend, is Horde Government. But why is becoming a Horde so good, you ask? Well, it's because Hordes are basically designed for world conquest, and if you want it the most easily, then using the power of the Horde is the way to go. So the issue now becomes how to actually change into a Horde as Ryukyu. This used to be a fairly straightforward process, but as more and more patches have been released, it has become more and more difficult to change from non-tribal to tribal government. Most guides you will see for Ryukyu into Horde are outdated. The standard current method for becoming a Horde in current patch that you will see in practically every speedrun for this game is to form Tibet, then complete their mission and step politics to reform into a Horde. But this has the issue of Ryukyu of requiring tag switch. Tag switching as Ryukyu does not prevent getting this achievement, but does change its requirements to doing a true one tag world conquest, which means no colonial vassals. Trust me, doing a world conquest is hard enough without the additional headache of conquering two more entire continents. So, Without forming Tibet, how is it possible to switch to tribal government in current patch? Well, the answer is... Rebels. As I'm sure you're aware, releasing any nation via the Release Nation window switches their government type to the same as yours, regardless of their previous government. However, Separatist Rebels do not work this way. Nations released via Rebels will keep the government type as when they last existed. As well as this, nations released via any method will retain the government reform progress of the nation they are released from. Now with all that laid out, we're done with the theory and it's time to get on to the strategy. The issue now is reaching the 5th reformed here as fast as possible to immediately become a horde once we're tribal. Now republics at 100 republican tradition get plus 100% reform progress growth, so if only there was some decision island nations could take to instantly become a republic. Break free from your overlord and the decision will become available. Now, getting the requisite trade power in our home node of Nippon is going to be very difficult, so we're going to want to move our trade capital to a much less contested node to our south, the Philippines. So move your troops onto Luzon, no CB Paganisan, and annex them. Get it cored, move your trade capital, and build up to 9 light ships to privateer in the node. Stab up to 2 and click the decision. Now a republic and instantly gaining plus 70% reform progress. If you want to speed through your reforms, you can focus mill in order to up your republican tradition and get the max bonus, but all you have to do now is wait until you reach tier 4. Once you reach tier 4, pick the one that enables the clergy estate for another plus 80% reform progress growth, and at this point it's time to start doing things. No CB or Atonian fully annex them. If they are too strong, or have too strong allies, then you'll have to pick a different tribe to vassalize and seize land from. At this point we need three things, 20s dev statified church and culture land, a releasable church and nation in our releasable countries menu, and rebels of that nation at 50-90% to progress. Once you have a state, accept and flip to church and culture, move your capital to the highest dev church and province, and sell Okinawa to Korea and Panganisan to Madias. At this point you should delete your armies and spend any spare monarch points deving. Now it's time for the exploit. Provoke the rebels and they should spawn in two stacks, one being on your zero garrison new capital. Now you have to give away all but three provinces, so sell or give to a vassal the lowest of provinces that the rebels aren't standing on to leave you with just three. Now it's time to open up the menu to release Orochoni. You want to leave this window open while the rebels break your country. It will take them a month to siege the land, then the month tick after that is when you will break. Watch up until the month ticks over and as soon as you see it, hit C to confirm. Make sure you've clicked to close any other pop-ups. If you've done everything correctly, you should become an independent tribal nation released from Ryukyu that can instantly reform into a horde. All you have to do now is immediately true spirit Ryukyu, build a merc, siege down the capital and annex them. Now simply release and play as Ryukyu and true spirit your overlord to gain independence. You should now instantly be at the fifth tier of reforms with a substantial amount of reform progress left over, and hopefully you're still less than 50 years into the game. Well, that's the guide finished. All that's to do after this point is a regular Manchu hold world conquest with a slightly slow start. I wanted to make this video simply to share the strategy that helped me finally achieve the three mountains after 4,000 hours of playtime. I'm aware that there are many other ways of getting this achievement and that my strategy will likely not work for everyone. 
However, I happen to very much enjoy playing hordes and like finding many different ways to create them, as my previous videos can attest. So I do hope that someone else can make use of this strategy and earn a Ryukyu world conquest for themselves. This is the first video I've properly edited and scripted, so I'm sorry if it's a little rough around the edges. Any tips would definitely be appreciated, as I hope to do similar videos in the future. With all that said and done, thank you very much for watching, and happy conquering!